Hi everyone, welcome to another Vita Learning Webinar. Today we got an exciting uh, webinar going on that will um, talk about the predictability, practical, and profitability of digital technology, which is an economic win-win for whether or not you're a chair side or a dental uh, laboratory. This applies for um, all of us in the industry. So. With so many different uh, innovations as far as digital dentures, uh, de uh, dentistry goes, whether it's dentures or whether it's a, uh, milling CAD CAM material as far as uh, uh, prosthetic restorations, um, this information is going to be very nice, very good for everyone to hear, to listen to. This is basically a, um, a two-parter, if you will. Uh, this part today we're going to do, um, in conjunction with this, another one June 24th, another webinar. But we've got um, both Dr. Jeff Sumner and Dr. Mayan Quack on the line. Hi, guys. How are you doing? We're doing great. great. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, appreciate it for having All us. All right. Excellent. How's, uh, how's the everything going up in Canada? How's the uh, lockdown there? And how is, uh, has it affected you guys' practice and academy? Well, you know we're we're doing all right. We just came out of lockdown a week ago, so we're we're feeling pretty uh, pretty good. We're uh, we're still nowhere near what you guys are doing. Uh, we're we're our, our big problem is is getting enough vaccine in our hands. So that's that's what's holding us back. Yeah, but in terms of practice wise, you know what we've been we've been fortunate. Everything's been going well since last year, and yeah, uh, yeah a lot of patients are are coming back. And I'm not sure whether on the states is is this way, but uh, in Canada it seems like almost people are trying to get back in to see us for more dentistry just in case something else happens again. So, I mean, we've, we've been fortunate. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, you oh, that's good. don't want to say too dear. much, but, uh, but it's, been, it's, been all, it's been pretty good for us. Excellent. Excellent. And then uh, how's, how's the patient pool? I mean, are they, are you having trouble with getting the patients back in? Um, have you been working around that COVID restrictions run, and stuff? Ironically, not at all. I mean, it, it, we, you know, we've seen our practices grow. It's been, it's been crazy. Now we can't say that's for every Canadian dentist out here, but in terms of how we've positioned ourselves, we have, uh, we, we've done incredibly well during this time. And again, not to, not to pat ourselves on the own, our own backs, but, but we, we've done well. We positioned ourselves. We were ready. We at the beginning when, when COVID hit, both uh, man and myself, we were in a position where we were two of the three practices in our in our area that was open and prepared for COVID and we were approved by our college to see uh, all cases during that time. So so we've done we've done very well during this time. So have you seen that uh, mainly because you're um, you do other things as well, but because your chair side dentists uh, digital uh, has that helped during this oh. time? Oh, 100%. So, I mean, yeah. I think that uh, patients, because they want to come in fewer times, they want to be able to have single visit dentistry. And I think that uh, the fact that we have everything at our fingertips, they've actually reached out to us more so from, from abroad. And, so, you know, they realize that we are one of few offices that have the ability to provide single visit dentistry. So it really has impacted our practices. And, and I think we're going to, you know, I guess, you know, try to talk about this to to the audience today about how it can actually affect everyone else's practices to be able to have this as, you know, as, as something that, uh, you know, you can all, you know, aspire to and, and use in your practice as well. You know, when we had, when, when offices, other offices weren't open and weren't ready to deal with this and they, they came into our offices and they saw what we had in place in terms of our, our, our digital and, and how advanced we were in terms of the technology, you know, they, they said, why do I want to go back to my my old dentist? And we're not trying to poach poach patients from other from our colleagues, but they said, I want to I want to stick with you. I want to I want to continue to see you. And that's that's really been the windfall for us through this whole time. And so our practices have grown where others maybe have suffered, but because we were we were already ahead of the curve in terms of being positioned, ready, and and already doing digital dentistry, uh, it was it was it's been really a, a good time for us. Yeah, we, we have, we honestly, we've actually been fortunate. Yeah, you know, like it's, and we realize that. Wow, that's, that's fantastic to hear. So we're going to start the uh, program in a few minutes. So before we do, uh, let me do a couple of uh, house cleaning items. Uh, for the audience, everyone is on mute uh, just to avoid any interference as far as the audio goes. So 
if you have a question, we're going to, at the end of the program, we're going to take all of your questions and we'll uh, have the doctors answer them. Uh, so during the program, if something comes up that you want to ask a question about or comment on, on your panel of your GoToWebinar, there is a question box. Just pull that out and type in your question. And then at the end of the program, we were going to uh, address those with the doctors. So uh, Q&A will be held at the, uh, the end of the program. Uh, this program is recorded, so you can visit it at a later time. Uh, you guys hold up your wine glasses just like uh, wine tasting. You can revisit uh, this recording uh, on our websites uh, for the Vita North American websites as you want. So cheers, everyone. Uh, and then uh, we are glad and happy to have uh, Drs. Quack and Dr. Summer uh, available for us. Uh, they'll be entertaining us for the next uh, hour and so minutes. And so I will uh, get off this now so that you guys can maybe introduce yourselves uh, to the audience and you can start your uh, program. So I am going to turn over the controls to you. And then we will get going with your presentation. Great. Thanks, Jim. That's great. You are now the presenter. And I will get rid of my picture. And so you guys can bring up your, All right. your computer, your program. Uh, there we go. First slide, there, Jim. <laughs> so right now I see you and I see your uh, PowerPoint. Excellent, excellent. So I'm sure it's a little scary. Uh, you know, it's it's. Uh, I know for my my parents and stuff when they said I'm I'm turning over the controls to you. That's that's always a little scary. But <laughs> the the, the, uh, the trust you have in us, Jim. Um, anyways, welcome welcome everybody. Thank you for for joining us here tonight uh, on on this uh, this talk. I know everybody's busy, and and you know if you're anything like like us, you probably. You know, over the past year and a half, half you probably get burned out of these uh, these talks. But we really appreciate you joining us. So, uh, without further ado, let's let's get into this. So tonight we're talking about predictable, practical, and profitable technology, and and how technology, what it does for our dental practices, and how we can uh, take advantage of it. Sorry, we're uh, there. We are. So first of all, let's uh, let's start with who we are. Uh, myself, I'm I'm uh, I'm Dr. Mian. No, I'm not Dr. Mian. I'm, I'm, Dr. <laughs> I'm Dr. Jeff Sumner. That's that's me on the left with the uh, with the the green sunglasses there. This was us about an hour ago. We were hanging out at my place and uh, having uh, having a good time, getting ready for uh, for this talk here tonight. And, and that's me and on the right there. So uh, I've been practicing dentistry. Both of us have been practicing dentistry for for 24 years. We've known each other for for 28 years. 28 years. Yeah, 28, 28 years. years. Long time. We went to school together, graduated together. We've uh, we've been good buddies for a long time. And uh, myself, I've been doing CERC dentistry, CAD CAM dentistry for uh, for over 12 years now. And when I got into it, uh, the difference here, you know, the, the interesting thing is the difference between me and, and myself is when I got into it. It was all about passion. For me, I started researching it back in 1999, and I realized this was where dentistry was going, but it wasn't there. The quality wasn't there. The, the, the product wasn't there. So I started researching it for about 10 years. And then in, 19, in 2009 is when I actually invested in it. And, and it wasn't because of the numbers. You know, that was the Patterson had tried to say to me for years, you know, Jeff, this is you've got to do this, you know, you can make money doing this. And that didn't matter to me. Of course, you know, we, we make a good living. There's no question. Um, but it wasn't about the numbers. It was about the, the product and it was about the quality that I was putting out. And when I saw in 2009, that was the tipping point for me when I knew that I had to invest in this and I had to do it. So for me, it was an emotional decision. It wasn't a, a financial decision. It was an emotional decision where I said, this is what I have to do. Whereas me and me and, uh, you know, I tried to convince him for a lot of years that he needed to get into it. And, and you know, me and me and is a little different. That's right. So, I mean, with myself, I mean, I, I'm like probably the typical dentist where everybody's all about the numbers. It has to make financial success. I mean, sorry, it has to make financial sense. And, you know, unlike Jeff, where, you know, he's all about the emotions of, 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 of dentistry and, and about the quality. I mean, for sure, quality is important to me, obviously, but 
when you invest in equipment, it has to make sense. Jeff, I mean, he comes from a background of having a humble office that he grew into this, this large monstrosity. And for me, it's always, I've been a little bit different. I've always kind of grown practices. So I've had, you know, six, seven, eight offices at a time. And so, you know, we come from two different sides of the coin, but at the end of the day, we have some certain commonalities. And this is one of them. And really the, the common, the commonality, the, the common denominator between me and myself is no matter the different kind of dentist we are is the, the bottom line is we practice ethical dentistry and no matter what happens, that is crucial to everything. We need to, we need, it needs to be ethical dentistry. So our, you know, the quote here, our moral and professional responsibility to, is to put the needs and the concerns of our patient first. And, and we would talk about this for years. We would get together and hang out and, and it didn't matter what, what we were doing. It all came down to the way we treated our patients was, was the same and it had to be ethical dentistry. So that's, that was a really common, uh, common denominator that's that right. brought us to, together and years ago we said you know we were speaking me and was speaking on surgery i was speaking on on cad cam dentistry and we just we were like you know what it'd be pretty cool if we actually spoke together and, and spoke about uh how how we've we've come to to do similar type of dentistry and our worlds have really collided but you can still provide ethical dentistry and also be profitable and i think that's really what yeah. we want to you know bring to the table today and how you do that with regards to the digital realm or the digital world of dentistry all right, let's get right into it. Okay, let's just talk about numbers. I mean, I'm the numbers guy. The average dentist in Canada, and I think the States as well, it's about, they, we bill about $400 an hour. And some of you may say, you know what, that's pretty low. But you know what, hey, that's great. It means that you're above average. But let's just use this $400 an hour rule as a conservative metric, because everything we want to show you guys, we want to show it to you in a very conservative way so it actually makes sense, okay? So in Canada and in the States, the average practice overhead is kind of in the mid 60s i mean during covid it's probably a little bit higher because of all the ppe and all the things we have to do but in general it's mid 60s an efficient practice is in the low 50s so let's talk about our practices so jeff and i we practice very similarly and this is kind of you know what we do our staff we pair stuff very well our hygiene even though that we you know have hygiene going all the time we basically charge less than the average or we produce less than the average we actually charge less than the fee guide based on our province in ontario you know jeff and i've been doing this for a long time and so you know we we're all about giving back we're all about giving back to the community giving back to patients so we discount our dentistry probably give at least a thousand dollars a day away and yet our staff we our staff orders whatever they want so our sundays are higher so right now you guys are probably looking at at this this talk and some of you are going uh why do we want to listen to these guys these this is not the kind of practice i want and, and <laughs> rightly so but bear, bear with us just hang, hang tight we, we're gonna keep going here okay so even though it doesn't sound so good in terms of us giving things away and reducing our fees the overhead is actually not in the 60s or the 50s it's actually in the low 40s and if we take it a step further if we actually added back the discounts and if we actually put the fees at the at the current fee guide the overhead is actually in the mid 30s you guys, you know what? We're not here to impress you. This is not, not the point. We're here to impress upon you that this is possible. But the question is, how? And, and so, so to Mian's point, I mean, absolutely. You know, a lot of you uh, don't know us, and and you're 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 stepping in and, and listening to this uh, this this webinar because of Jim, because of Vita, and we appreciate that. But who are we? We're not trying to show off. We're just trying to uh, show you that you know maybe we do know a thing or two after doing this for 24 years of practicing. We can share our, our wealth of knowledge with you and, and we want to, you know, and show you how, how this is possible. That's right. So basically, this is the answer. Plain and simple. Success is the uncommon application of common knowledge. So the idea is that everybody in this room, you already know the answer to pretty much everything, but it's how you apply that knowledge that really changes everything. We want to be able to share that with you today. So one of the one of the big things we talk about in one of our, our main lectures that we've talked about over the years is the secrets of practice profitability. But really where it becomes really crucial is the secrets of practice profitability in the digital world. So we want to show you how you can launch your practice and, and what you can do. So we buy technology. Technology, we all know technology is a part of, of where we're at in, in dentistry. You can choose to, to buy technology, but the biggest thing is everybody goes, technology is expensive. Well, no kidding, it's expensive. I mean, but should that hold us back? 
And, and if we just buy technology, does that mean we're going to, to be profitable and make money? No, it doesn't. You know, what we need to do if we buy technology is we need to learn how to become efficient with it. And that means taking the courses, whether it's with CDOCs, whether it's with, with our dentistry academy that we started uh, a couple of years ago in Canada here, whether it's, it doesn't matter who you learn from, but you have to learn to be efficient. Once you learn to be efficient, that's when the profitability steps in. That's when you become profitable dentists. You can't just buy technology and be profitable. You have to be efficient with it. And, and that's, that's what it's all about. So we all realize that, I think we can, we can all agree at this stage that the current trends in digital dentistry is the reality is that technology is no longer a luxury. It's not, no longer when I started, you know, oh, wow, you're, you're a practice that has this, this uh, CAD CAM dentistry, you're a CERC dentist, you know? This is an expectation for patients. Patients seek out, and we found that through COVID times, Patients seek out our practice because we provide these services and we can do single visit dentistry. We can do things that a lot of other dentists can't do. So where is digital dentistry today? Well, we had this little thing come along about a year and a half, two years ago. Um, well, I guess it was a year and a half ago, That's right? Yeah, well, let's say a year and a half be, be appropriate here. A year and a half ago, where digital dentistry is today is a little different. So COVID-19 hit. And what did that do? What did that do to us in our world? Well, let's talk about outside of dentistry. So what do we do? Well, everybody went out and they bought a Peloton. They bought the Peloton or the, the mirrors uh, the, that they can do. We're, we're all using Skip the Dishes. We're using Uber Eats more. We're ordering food in. We're or ordering our groceries online. Our groceries are being delivered. Uh, Amazon has gone through the roof. It's been amazing. Our kids, my kids, my kids are in grade 10 and 11. And they're doing online schooling. They haven't they haven't had the high school experience that we experienced. It, it's 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 terrible. It sucks. I, you know, it's I hate to say that, but it but it does. But it's also changed our world in dentistry. And and how has it changed our world? We know I've talked about dentistry and digital dentistry for years, but now single visit dentistry is so much more significant than it ever was. Patients seek us out for single visit dentistry. And, and they want to come to our office, and, and rightly so. Why would you not want to come to an office where you can get a crown or you can get an implant or you can do whatever all done in one appointment? Less time of being at the dentist. So, you know, we, we've talked about the CAD CAM evolution for, for a number of years now. And, you know, here, here I show, uh, we show the prime scan, the prime mill, the speed fire, and again, this is not uh, a dense plicerone talk. This is not about talking one how one compares to the other, one is better than the other. This is what I use. This is what Mian uses. And this is kind of, uh, to us, this is the gold standard. This is what's been around for over 30 years. And, and it's, and it's a, an amazing technology. Now, this is not to say that the other scanners out there are not great scanners. They are. What they've done is, is this world has created all the scanners, all the, the companies have come to the table and put out an amazing product. What we use is PrimeScan. It works with us and, and it, and it uh, you know, the whole system is, it integrates incredibly well. So now we talk about PrimeScan and just imagine how you integrate that with cone beam. You know, so do something like guided surgery, as you all know, when you actually take a cone beam, you can take a digital scan, you can literally merge the two images together you create a digital guide, or sorry, a, a, a surgical guide, and the guide allows you to be able to plan and place the implant and also design the crown all before you actually give the patient anesthetic. I mean, this is incredible. This is the way that we want to be able to do dentistry in the everyday. This is, this is what every, you know, the average dentist, the average dentist now wants to be able to do, and they should be able to do, is to, to design a crown, place an implant, restore that without having to send your patient out to another, to a specialist, to another dentist. This is what we all should be able to do. This is, this is basically what we talk about, dentistry for dummies. We're, we're, we're great proponents of dentistry for dummies. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know all about me, but, uh, but that's, uh, that's taken me a long way in, uh, in my career. So guided endo. I don't know if any of you have actually tried this before, but you, again, combine the, the technology, you combine the CAD CAM, you combine cone beam to do the same sort of technology as guided surgery, but you're doing this for endodontics. You'll just imagine having a guide that you place over the teeth and allows you to be able to find the canal so that way you don't have to worry about perforation. I mean, Jeff and I, I mean, we don't practice this way, but the technology allows for GPs to be able to do this 
and to be able to have you know access to the canals, the number of canals, so that way you don't have to worry about having any mishaps during uh, endodontic therapy. Now let's talk about you know what what CAD CAM combined with CBCT and, and airway analysis can do too. Now this is something as Americans you guys can do uh, much more readily than we can do. In Canada we're limited by the the field of view that we can use with the CBCT. Uh, yeah, Ontario especially. Our, yeah, our, our right. field of view is basically eight by eight centimeters. And and in and, and you know we have to justify why we're taking a CBCT. Whereas you know. In the states there you can take a cbct on basically every new patient and you can assess airway you can do a lot of things and airway ortho that is a huge growing aspect of of dentistry and and you know in terms of being able to provide treatment to improve the airways and and reassess it after you've you've created an appliance uh and you again we me and talked about merging the files so that you can uh, merge your your cbct with your with your scan using whether it's your prime scan whether it's whatever scanner you use um you can you can have a huge impact on these patients lives and and it's it's incredible now another thing that i do a lot of that that mean doesn't do quite as much of but he does amazing other stuff uh is it's digital orthodontic solutions so you know i've been using uh, digital orthodontic solutions for the past 10 or 12 years, which means, what does that mean? It means I've used Invisalign. Well, no kidding, a lot of people have used Invisalign, but I've used uh, every other system, uh, you know, uh, and now my main one is is uh, SureSmile. But what do I have to do? I use my 3D printer. So I don't send anything out. I do it all in office, and, and this is unbelievable. We have whole lectures on this and show the profitability using orthodontic, and we'll touch on that later on to, uh, today in this lecture. But, but you know, we won't get into that too much. So right now, you probably listened to the first ten minutes of our of our lecture, and you're you're a little bit overwhelmed, going, okay, you know, you've talked about uh, 3D printers, you've talked about scanners, you've talked about uh, CBCT. It is overwhelming. Where do I where do I start? If you if you're not already in there, you have one, you have two, you have three, you have none of these. Where do you start? So this talk is about predictable, practical, practical, and profitable technology. And where do we go? The problem though, guys, is that with technologies like you know, like you all know, it's not cheap. It costs a lot of money. It's not like you know, thousand dollars, two thousand, it's like tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. So the idea is, you know, based on today's talk, we want to be able to make sense of this for everybody. So one of the big things that we've talked about in our secrets of practice profitability is the the rule of return of investment. And when me and I have talked about our 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 rules of return of investment, and again, this is by no means the the the, the rule for everybody else, is but is that if you can justify, if you can have a return of investment on whatever you're buying in three to five years, then it makes sense. Yeah, anything beyond five years, guys, you're basically buying a toy or you're not using it enough. Yeah. And if you, let's say you pay it off in six years or more, the problem is that now the new technology has come out. So then you right. all of a sudden, you know, your old technology is becomes obsolete. But right. if you can do everything under five years, fantastic. That, yeah. That's, 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 I agree. that's our role. Yeah. So it all begins with CAD CAM. So, so the question, here's the answer. You, you asked, what do I, what do I invest in first? Is it a 3D printer? Is it a CBCT? Is it CAD CAM? I would say CAD CAM, and, and, and there, as I said, there's a number of systems out there, and and there's no one that is is the answer. If you ask us, sure, the answer we we use Prime Scan, but there's a lot of different systems, and they're all very good. All right, so I don't know, we don't know who is in our audience in terms of you know who has scanners, who has mills, who has cone beams, and stuff like that. But for those of you who already have scanners, you know, bear with us for the first few minutes, and for those of you who do not have scanners. You know, we want to enlighten you in terms of you know how scanners actually make a difference. So let's talk about the traditional workflow in terms of polyvinyl siloxane, taking impressions for crown and bridge. So what do we do? So number one, we give local anesthetic, and after that we go ahead and take a sectional impression or a full arch impression for the purpose of making a, a temporary crown afterwards. Then we go ahead and do our crown prep. Right later on, we use retraction cord, retraction paste, and then we take a final PBS impression. You know, wait four or five minutes. And a lot of times, guess what happens, guys? We take another one. And sometimes it's bleeding, 
or whatnot. We take a third or a fourth, and it happens, right? It happens to the best of us. It's just the reality of what happens with, with polyvinyl siloxane. And impression, it's not an easy thing. And what do you do? You take that impression out and you go, well, that one I got what I need from there, and that one I got what I need from there. And you send them both to the lab and you say, can you please put these together and, and find a way to make this work? That's right. You know, there, there's so many different ways, right? That's right. <laughs> but, and then what happens next? We have to take a bite registration sometimes if we don't use uh, triple tray. And let's say the bite registration, guess what? You put the impression material in the patient's mouth, they bite down, but you can't spit, you cannot physically see how they bite. You have to assume they're biting the correct way. And afterwards, we make a temporary crown, and somewhere along the way, we actually have to pick a shade for the, for the patient. One or two weeks later, we get the crown back. It may not fit exactly, may not be the right shade. And a lot of times, just to save ourselves from embarrassment, if it's posterior enough, guess what? Just like all of us, I mean, sometimes we put these crowns in, we cement the crown in, make adjustments, and, and the patient's on their way. Nice work, man. Well done. Well done. Yeah, look at that. Beauty. It's not ideal, but this is the traditional way of doing things. So we've talked about the evolution of CAD CAM technology. All right. Now let's let's talk about the digital workflow. So what I want to talk about is how the digital workflow differs from what Mian just described. So let me let me describe to you how my workflow goes and how Mian's workflow goes in terms of now. I bring a patient in um, before. Whether, whether that patient is scheduled for a crown or whether they've come in, and my favorite patient is they've come in, they have a big MOD amalgam or something, and they've broken a buckle cusp. Then I go, oh, fantastic, you know, and, and they're looking at this big old amalgam, and they go, I hate this, Jeff, I hate this. And, and you go, okay, well, that's, that's fine. We can, we can take care of you right now. So you make a plan, you tell them, you discuss all the things, you know, you go through your, you know, all the, all the things you need to go through, and they say, yeah, I want, to, I want to do that. That's great. And in COVID times, for sure, they want to do that. I freeze them up. Now they're frozen. What's the next step? Now while they're freezing up, what do I do? Sorry, go ahead there. So let, let's let's walk through a, a PremScan workflow. So let's talk about a scenario, tooth number three seven in Canada. If you're if you're in the states, I'm terrible at the conversion here. Same with the the money, but in in the states that would be tooth number eighteen, right? Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So tooth number eighteen in Canada, tooth number uh, three seven. So this is live. This is real time. So now I've frozen that patient up. While the freezing is setting in, I'm scanning their mouth. This is me scanning uh, for tooth number three, three seven. You can see the, the distal lingual cusp broken. Now, uh, I can't even finish talking, and I'm scanning the opposing arch. Obviously, something's gone on there with tooth number, uh, I don't know, what? what 14. 14. Jeez. See, I'm terrible at this. <laughs> um, tooth number two six in Canada, but tooth number 14 if, uh, in the States. So I'm doing the opposing arch. So real time, this is real time, guys. Seconds, so now let's do the buckle bite. Now this is important. So now before Mrs. Jones has even been completely frozen, I'm saying, Mrs. Jones, I want you to close your teeth together and I want, it, I want your buckle bite. Because imagine this, we've all been there. You know, you can be the most perfect dentist in the world. You can do, do the most perfect prep in the world. And, and and take the most perfect impression or the most, most perfect scan. But if their bite is off, guess what? Your crown, your, your final restoration is off. So it's very crucial, very important that you get an accurate buckle bite right at the beginning. And I, if I get that before they're frozen, then I'm, I'm, I'm golden, I'm, I'm, I'm set, you know? Because if, if they, I ask them to bite after they've been open for, for 45 minutes, half an hour, an hour, it doesn't matter. I say, Mrs. Jones, can you close your teeth together? I, they're over here. I, they're over there. No, it's wrong. You know, you're trying to ask them to bite the right way. But if they do it right off the bat before they're frozen, you're going to get that accurate bite. And the great thing about the digital workflow is that when you see them in occlusion, you can physically see their bite. Yeah. Versus when you're doing it the analog way and they have compression material in between or like blue mousse or what have you, you can't see how they're actually biting. You're only relying on the, op op I guess, the opposing uh, quadrants to see how they're including. So it's a, it's very, very different. Crucial. Now, now there's a couple different ways to, to, to move forwards here. You know, you can add, add another catalog and then copy it in there. What man's done here in this case was he, he virtually cut out that tooth number 18 or three, seven as, as we would refer to it. And then he's prepped on that tooth and then let's go real time and see, here we are. So this is our final impression. So remember what we're doing with with analog polyvinyl siloxane we're taking our our light body our heavy body and we're putting it in there and you're you're jamming it in there 
what, what did that take? That just took about five, not even 10 seconds. I can't even finish talking about it and it's done. And we have a perfect, accurate impression. And, and you know what? If you don't like it, if you see something right off the bat you don't like, you go back and you redo it and you re and you rescan. But the margins are right there. Proposal and design. Let's let's jump into that. So this is like when I when I talk to my kids, my my kids in grade ten and, and grade eleven. You know, it's like life. I'm trying to do a life life lesson here. You get out of it what you put into it. If you give the computer a good model, if you give it good information, you're going to get a good proposal. But really what you're doing, if you give that, that computer a good proposal, you're going to get a good crown proposal and you take very little time to actually adjust and, and change that, that restoration. So at this stage now, I take that proposal, I send it to my mill and I mill it and that's it. All right, let's talk numbers guys, okay? Because I know a lot of dentists out there want to understand how this actually makes sense. So once again, we talked about the average dentist. The average dentist produces $400 an hour. So let's just take that and use that as a baseline, okay? So we talk about digital scanning. So for those of you who do not have digital scanners, pay attention. So the prep time is reduced by five minutes. Why? Because just now when you saw that final impression, it took literally five seconds. So when you take a final impression with PBS, it takes four or five minutes. And a lot of times you take a second impression. So guess what guys? The prep time is reduced by five minutes very conservatively mm -hmm. for, for basically you know, all your crowns. On top of that, your insert time with digital dentistry is reduced by 10 minutes. So let's say, for example, if you take uh, you know, half an hour to insert the crown or 40 minutes to insert the crown, you can realistically deduct 10 minutes off the time. I mean, realistically, you should only take 10 minutes to insert. Why? Because when you do digital scanning, what you send to either your mill or what you send to the lab it's exact. There's no room for error. There's no distortion of, of material. They get exactly what you scan. And so when you get the final product back, it's going to fit bang on. There is no room for error at all. You don't have to worry about context, occlusion. Everything's going to fit beautifully. All you do is cement it on and away the patient goes. There's no blood. There's no saliva. I mean, and again, saying 10 minutes, reduced by 10 minutes is so conservative. We're talking, you know, when we're inserting uh, seric restorations, we're talking a couple minutes to insert them and, and they're bang on. I mean, you know, it's it's just, it's unbelievable how accurate it is every single time. So basically, based on this digital scanning, just to have a scanner alone, you're saving 15 minutes of time. So if you bill, so let's say if you bill $400 an hour, you're basically saving, you could be making an additional $100 per appointment. So let's kind of put this in perspective. So for those who bill $400 an hour, and again, this is a very conservative number, if you did 10 crowns a month, you're basically saving or making an additional $12,000 a year based on time. If you did 20 units a month, you're making 24,000. If you did 40 units a month, you're basically increasing your production by $50,000. But the good thing is that this, most of us don't produce $400 an hour. Most of us produce more. And some dentists, you know, we actually produce more than $1,000 an hour. But these are the numbers. And so if you put this into the equation, you're talking about return on investment, this actually makes sense. You've actually paid off your prime scanner, your scanner, in six months to five years. And prime scan, guys, is probably the most expensive scanner on the market. And, and you know that that's really that's the thing that scares a lot of dentists off. When we when we look at that number and we go, you know, in in the states you're looking at forty five thousand just for the prime scan only, and in, in Canada you're looking at upwards of sixty thousand, and that's just for a scan only. But to do that it really does set your practice aside. And there are other scanners out there um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But but with scan only, that is a scary number. But the good thing is guys, when I talked about after you paid off your scanner in like, you know, five, six months to five years, remember every single year thereafter, you're making that much more money. Why? Because you've actually saved that much more time. Right. That's the difference. So let's take this to the next level. So we talked about scan only. Well, let's take it to the next level if you were the lab. So now you're doing it all in-house and we're now getting to the stage where single visit dentistry. So you're in control. As the dentist, you're in control. You're controlling the margins, the contours, the contacts, the shade, everything. There is, there is no question. When, when I design a crown, I can control my contacts, my occlusion. I can design the, the way I want the floss to go through. I can design the broadness of that contact. I can design the tightness of that contact. I know every single time when I check that floss, it's going to go through in a certain way 
and exactly how I want it. It is, it is the confidence you have doing this is unbelievable. And the great thing is that, let's say, for example, if the way you have your crowns is different than the way your colleague has their crowns, you can actually set whatever parameters as your default. Mm -hmm. So, which is incredible, right? Yeah, so, really the way is. I make my crowns is different than the way Jeff does, and so our parameters are different. So the total cost, you know, if you look at if you look at the total cost for a prime scan, a prime mill, a speed fire, yeah, these are scary numbers. These are these are big numbers. And again, you know, we, we look at COVID times, 160,000 to 200,000 when we're when we're during COVID times. Is this something that makes sense? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think I'd rather buy a car. Jeff. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of money. You know, <laughs> I, I say to my my staff, I'm like. You know, when you're when you're wheeling around my my prime scan, you're wheeling around my Ferrari. You know, I've chosen to invest in myself and in my practice, but without a doubt, I mean, we can we can sh we show you the numbers of why it makes sense. Okay, so again, let's talk about the ROI, return on investment. So, return on investment when you're talking about prime scan and the mill, there's two revenue streams. Number one, there's time savings, and secondly, now we're the lab. So let's talk about both. So time savings. So now we have a scan and a mill. There before we talked about saving 10 minutes, sorry, five minutes of time. Now we're talking about the prep time re being reduced by 10 minutes. So how is it 10 minutes? Remember, you have to make that temporary crown. So now you don't have to make that temporary crown anymore. So you've now added five minutes to the equation. Right. On top of that, your insert time, again, reduced by 10 minutes conservatively. So you're saving 20 minutes of time by being able to do this on your own. So by having that $400 an hour rule, you're saving or making an additional $133 per hour. So we're talking about uh, going from polyvinyl siloxane to prime scan and mill based on 20 minutes time savings. This is what we're adding to the equation based on how productive you are per hour and based on the number of units you do per month. Very, very conservative numbers that we're, that we're looking at here. Okay, so this is part one. Part two is now you're the lab. Now you actually can increase your revenue by having profits that are generated from your own lab. So block costs, about $40 in Canada, I think about similar in the States. Right. Lab fees, depending on where you are in, in the States, I mean, Canada is pretty much in, in the mid 300, so your net profit is about $300 a unit. So a lot of colleagues say, you know what, I can't charge, or I can't justify charging that much for my lab fee. My lab fee is actually 200 bucks. Okay, that's fine. So let's just say it is $200. The net profits, let's say, going to be $150. So let's be really conservative here. So even if you made your net profit $150 per unit, let's look at the, the, I guess, the total ROI. Based on $150 per unit, this is what you're adding to the equation completely from, from everything. Depending on what you bill per hour. Yeah. That's right. So based on your, your minimum $400 an hour and your minimum 10 units a month, you're actually able to pay off everything prime scan mill your oven in under five years yep. and guess what guys every single year thereafter you're making that additional amount on the right column every year why because you've saved time and you have the technology yep. now we haven't even added in you know this is another variable we haven't even talked about uh you know we talked about all the numbers but the cost of the materials that we buy being analog dentists you know, our impression trays, our, our impression material, our temporary material, all the other things that are involved in that. You add that over the time of investment and, you know, the polyvinyl material costs can be anywhere from 20000 to 80000 We haven't even added the, that into the numbers. So, so I mean, when, when Min talks about making sense of the numbers, I mean, this just, this just you know, really shows the, the extent of how, how this does completely make sense. So this is the problem. Like myself, like most, like most dentists out there, this, these are the excuses that we give ourselves. I mean, these were actually my excuses for a lot of years. Past, yeah, for the past like <laughs> decade before I jumped into it. But the big one is this: this is the excuse that we all make to ourselves because we say we can't justify the cost of it. It just doesn't make any sense. Why? Because this is what we say: I don't do that many crowns. A lot of times, you know, you hear you need to do 15 crowns in order to in order for this to make sense a month. And for me, like at the time, I I didn't do 15 crowns, so I couldn't make financial sense out of this. But, you know, Jeff and I, we talked about the secrets of practice profitability. And we talked about initially that, you know, that we have that knowledge that uh, if we apply the knowledge that we have, we can actually open the door to a whole different way of thinking. So one small secret that you guys already know the answer to, but you really haven't 
you know, thought about it too much, let's bring it to the forefront now. So the small secret is this. When you're excited about something and you enjoy what you do, guess what, guys? You do more of it. So think about that. So let's give you examples. Okay, so for myself in, in dentistry, I'm a surgery guy. This is basically my forte. And so I do more of this than most of my colleagues. Why? Because I love it and I, I, I present it to my patients. And yeah, guess what? I get a lot of referrals from this. This is what it's what I do. It's my bread and butter. Whereas me, you know, I mean, I like the I like the challenge of the the, the single anterior. I mean, you know, they say you know most uh, most restorative gurus you do two two four six. No, you do you you challenge ourselves. We do the single anterior or you know the full uh, full mouth reconstruction or ortho. You know, and you know I I've been doing digital ortho and and clear liners for for almost twelve years now, and and I've tried exceed. I've tried sure smile i've tried uh clear clear to, clear clear correct uh, i've tried tried them all i mean my big one is is sure smile now for sure but but this is what i do and and this is where we come from we're very different type of dentists and also for implants i mean this is again my bread and butter i'm i'm a surgery guy so because i love it i enjoy what i do i do more of this and this is nothing different with regards to can cam when i first started you know i didn't do that many crowns but then all of a sudden, when I had the technology, I thought, this is actually pretty cool. And so I started to actually believe in it. I started to see the results and I started to be passionate about it. So guess what? I did more of it. Right. So let's let's talk about some numbers here. I mean, this is me talking about numbers. I mean, me and the numbers guy. But but really, you know, so me and uh, got into to, to CAD CAM dentistry a couple of years back, three just over three years ago. Uh, well, three years ago almost, three, yeah. yeah, really. And and when Mian started, he was he was doing about and, and Mian numbers. He he looked at the numbers. He you know, and I was trying to convince him for years. And he said I was I was doing he was doing eleven point two crowns per month. And you know, when I started uh, into CAD CAM, I was doing about ten crowns per month. And and it just he was like I don't know if it made sense, but he got into it. And in March 2018, a few months after he got it. He did 25 crowns a month. Of course he did because he looked at the numbers. And in July 2018, he did 40 crowns a month. And that doesn't include the the implants that that Mian places. Mian places probably anywhere between 300 to 500 implants per year. And that's not including him restoring those. Those are just crowns that he's doing on teeth that need crowns. And then there's Jeff. I mean, they, I call him the king of Sarah. The poor guy only does five to 10 units. I mean, horrible numbers, but this is actually Terrible. every single day. So even though he only works three days a week, you're talking about 100 units a month. That's a lot. So when we see these numbers, guys, and when we're kind of showing you guys, you know, 20 units, 40 units, and you guys are thinking like, there's no way I do this. I mean, honestly, guys, I never thought that I would do these numbers. But we talked about when you're excited about something, when you enjoy what you do, you do more of it. It totally holds true for me and also for, 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 for the digital dentistry with, with CAD CAM. And then remember, a year and a half ago, we had this, uh, this little thing come into our world, uh, the COVID effect. Honestly, uh, you know, when we've talked about it, the numbers, the, the amount of CEREX, the amount of uh, single visit restorations that I've done since COVID hit has just gone through the roof. You know, a patient comes in and you say, you know, I can do this in one appointment they jump at it and, and they're appreciative. They're, they can't, they're not, they're happy to to, to pay $1,000, $1,200 for a CEREC. They can't, they can't pay it fast enough and they are so appreciative of, of what you can do for them. And we've seen that across the board, both of us. It's That's been right. incredible. So I mean, guys, if you don't have certain aspects of you know, digital technology, this is unfortunately the time. And fortunately, if you have the ability to do it, honestly, jump. Yeah. And even though it's a scary thing, it makes financial sense and we can walk you through every step of the way. So you, by all means, you can reach out to us at the For end sure. of the presentation. So let's talk about CAD CAM capabilities. And, and I'm not going to, you know, we're going to, I don't even want to get into like the full scope of CAD CAM capabilities, but just a couple things that maybe scare the average dentist off in terms of CAD CAM, uh, in terms of any kind of dentistry. So if you're, if you're stressed about getting the perfect impression, say I'm doing, so this is a case I did a number of years ago, early on. Uh, and I did eight restorations in one appointment, one visit with a, with a patient. So when you do that, if you if you're doing analog dentistry and you're put, placing cord and you're taking that impression with with polyvinyl, and you you now place that impression in their mouth, if you are not stressed about getting every perfect margin and every 
every detail of everything you've got. Well, you know what? Honestly, I, I need to learn from you because I have so much to learn from that. But when I'm using CAD CAM dentistry, there is zero, zero stress for me when I do this. And, and when I scan, I can tell you right off the bat, do I need to change anything? And again, I could go through the whole thing. Um, but this is where within a couple hours, I took this patient from the left to the right. And, and this is a very monochromatic uh, restoration that I did. But just to show you, I mean, closing spaces, uh, immediate ortho, uh, strength, everything we did in, in one appointment. It's, it's pretty incredible what you can do in one appointment. All right, so I'm gonna, I bet you I'm gonna say that we're all in the same boat. What is the thing that we all hate doing at Crime and Bridge? I'd probably say this is the number one thing that all dentists cringe when a patient comes into our chair. Tooth number one, six in Canada or tooth number three in the States? Doesn't look so bad, does it? No, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll crown that, no problem. Okay, but how about this? It's yeah. an abutment for a partial denture. Just imagine guys, just, you know, a patient comes in, what do we need to do to be able to have this patient get a final crown that actually fits perfectly with the denture? The patient has to actually leave the denture with the lab a couple times. They come in when the crown finally comes back. Does the denture actually fit perfectly? Of course not. No. It's brutal. This is the most brutal time that you know you do not want to do a crown. When you tell a patient that they have to now go without their their denture, their partial denture for 24 hours. And, and they have anterior teeth involved in that partial denture, that is a horrible thing to say to them. And they say, I can't, I can't function without that. So let's show you something that's kind of cool. This is actually an amazing way of being able to provide single visit, one hour dentistry to a patient. So what we do with the frame scan, we actually draw a line and say, listen, I want to be able to copy this tooth. I want to copy the, the buccal side, almost, even that lingual aspect, where that lingual concavity is, where the, where the clasp goes. So the actual crown is, is I mean, we're not actually designing anything. The computer is actually, you know, basically copying and reproducing what uh, the patient had. So at the end of the day, the patient, this 80-year-old uh, woman, you know, we didn't worry about shade or anything like that or, or, or material per se. But look at the fit. The fit yeah. is absolutely perfect. And the patient never went away without the denture. She left within the hour and everything fits beautifully. And, and they won't appreciate this necessarily unless they've been through this in their, in their experience. You know, if they've been through this before and you can provide this, this is a huge game changer. If, if it's their first time, they just go, oh, that's pretty cool. And they talk to their friends and realize this is a big deal. So now we're talking about, we've talked about technology. We've talked about predictable, practical, profitable technology. But let's talk about material technology. And, and you know, we, I've been doing cert dentistry for a long time. But guess what? Not only does the technology advance, materials advance and that's where Vita comes in and, and they've really you know stepped up and, and done a great job with their with their materials so you know when we do me and already showed this and I already you know busted his chops for this and you know great great restoration you put that in I wouldn't be proud of that you know how often is is the shade off we take we we put a crown in if I put that in what what do we do Sorry, guys. All right. So the shade can be off. And why? We swear I put a tab up next to it. You know, I swear it's the right shade. But why is it off? So this is the problem. I mean, the great thing is that every dentist in the world has this. We all have the Vita classical shade guy, right? I think every dentist in the world. In the world, literally. Every if you go to any dentist office anywhere in the world, they're gonna have that Vita classical shade guide. Right. And I mean, and Vita is the shade company of the world. And this is, you know, without question. But I hate to break Vita's bubble, but the classical shade guide, unfortunately, and I think they know it, this is old school. Yep. And so let me, let's explain this. So the Vita classical shade guide, when you actually put in a 3D volume of hue value chroma, and you put all the Vita classical shade, you know, shades in that volume, most of them kind of bunch in around this small little volume here. And so down the road, I mean, again, this is years or 20 years ago, Vita invented the 3D master. The problem is that most of us didn't adopt this because we stuck with the we stuck with the traditional classical shade guide. But the 3D Master, what it does is it actually allows for all the different shades to span the entire volume. So what happens is that when you actually pick the right shade in the hue, value, and chroma, you know, in 3D volume, whether or not you send it to your lab or whether or not you actually make it yourself, the amount of remakes pretty much goes down to zero. Why? Because the shade is bang on. And, and whether you're whether you're 
just a scan only practice or whether you're milling yourself, whether you're sending it to your lab, not only can you get better information for your own information, but communication with the lab is just as important. And, and the 3D master is, is crucial to that. So, I mean, guys, I mean, if you don't have this, get, you know, this, this little silver box, this is something that's going to be a game changer for your practice. I mean, it's only been a couple of years since I've switched over to 3D. Honestly, this is night and day. And we're going to be actually talking about right. this, uh, you know, this case, how to actually use it, how to actually uh, make use of this so that you actually have very, very few remix because your shade's going to be bang on every single time. Yeah, we talk about that in, in our next talk. That's right, in the right? gym. So let's, let's talk about the evolution of CAD CAM material technology. So, you know, it, it's kind of interesting that really that, that Densefly Serona has their own blocks and they have their own shade guides and yet their standard, their gold standard for shade guide is the Vita shade guide. Well, no kidding. We know that Vita is the shade company. And, and we can actually choose a shade using the technology that's out there. And, and other scanners have the same technology and they all use the Vita shade guide. And we can choose the classical shade guide or we can use the 3D shade guide. So let's kind of go back to that uh, original scan, tooth number 37 in Canada or tooth number 18 in the States. So what we do is this, we, we design the crown, we pick the shade, the 3D shade is 4M2. And we're okay. comparing that to what, what is that tooth number? Tooth number uh, twenty three five. Three five in Canada, or, or, or tw tooth number twenty? I think. Yeah. It's see, I'm, <laughs> I'm terrible at that. Okay, so with Vita, the great thing is that because you know, and again, this is where I might differ than Jeff. For me, I want to be able to simplify things. I know that the three D shade guide to me is hands down the best shape, the best way to pick shape. And the great thing is that with blocks, if I want to be able to mill something. Vita is the only company that makes blocks in their 3D shade as well. So it makes sense for me to just use Vita. Otherwise, if I use a different block, it's not 3D shaded. So in this case here, I want to be able to have something in the posterior area. I want to use a block that's strong. Vita Suprinity, this is my block of choice. It's actually very similar to Emacs, but it's actually stronger than Emacs. And when you insert it, because again of the shade technology, guys, you can't even tell it's even there. I mean, you don't even know which tooth it is because it blends right in. Right. So if we talk about time savings, I mean, me and you know, me and being a, an early user of, uh, or only being involved in in CAD CAM dentistry for three years, I mean, it made sense for him. So you know, Emacs has been the gold standard and still is the gold standard for for materials. And and you know what? There is nothing wrong with it. I love Emacs. I still use a lot of Emacs. And, and, and because I've been doing CAD CAM dentistry for 12 years, I understand the, the different nuances of all the different materials. And I've tried all the different materials. They've all been sent to me. I've tried them all. I, I, and, and they're all fantastic. Um, but if, if you want to compare, you know, when I do an Emacs, it takes me a certain amount of time. I need to mill it. I need to fire it. And I need to stain and glaze it. And it's going to take me anywhere from 28 to 43 minutes total time whereas if i'm if i if there's an application where i can use a beta enamic which is a different material and different applications i can mill it and it doesn't need to be fired i can mill it and polish it and it's going to take me 11 to 13 minutes so when we're talking time savings we're talking 17 to 30 minutes per restoration of time saving so what that means when we when we go back to the numbers, I mean the number guy at four hundred dollars per hour, very conservative. That's about one hundred and fifty-seven dollars per restoration that I'm saving or that I'm making more. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to do everything in Enamic. Um, Emacs is an amazing material, and and I love it, and and it's got great applications. But but Vita has some amazing materials out there too. So let's talk about time, guys. So again, back to this chart. Let's say if you're producing $400 an hour and you do 10 crowns a month, you can basically put an additional $19,000 back in your pocket because you changed materials. If you did 20 a month, 37,000, 40 a month, 75 grand. But once again, most of us don't bill $400 an hour. Most of us are above that average. So look at the numbers. Look at what you can actually put back in your pocket just because you changed materials. I mean, this is crazy. And this doesn't mean, you know, I mean, these are these are punching numbers. This does not mean you do everything in Vita Enamic. This just, it shows the point. It, it, it really shows the point of 
using the appropriate material for the appropriate restoration makes sense. And you can actually save and make a lot more money doing it. Exactly. That. But if you understand the value of time and understand yeah. the value of technology, how you apply it, this makes all the difference, guys. Right. So let's kind of give you a case. So this is a, a patient came in tooth number two, two in Canada, tooth number 10 in the States. Uh, traditionally, what would I do? Okay, so traditionally, I would actually, first appointment, I'd uh, build a tooth up with a pin retained composite for 30 minutes, you know, build $400, and this is, these are Canadian dollars. I'd bring the patient back a second appointment to basically crown that tooth, make a temporary crown. So that's about $20 for you guys. Yeah, $20. <laughs> and then uh, third appointment, the patient, actually, we get the crown inserted. So total time is an hour and a half. Based on $1,500, you're basically billing about $1,000 an hour. Again, still not bad. I mean, really, when 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 the average is $400 per hour, $1,000 per hour, not bad. And I think in the States, your numbers are higher than this, which is really great for you guys. So now with technology, I can actually build up that pin retain composite and actually do the enamic crown all in the same appointment. So I go from here to here, but I'm doing this in actually half an hour. Why? Because I'm actually using materials that actually are a lot faster. I'm allowing technology to be able to be my, my greatest resource. So $1,500, I'm doing it in half an hour. So therefore, you're basically increasing your efficiency to three times what you did before traditionally, which is crazy. This is, yeah. this is how technology is to your advantage. So the idea is that you're taking advantage of the CAD-CAM technology, you're taking advantage of the shade technology with 3D shades because you don't have to worry about having a remake. Right. And you're taking advantage of the material technology because again, with 3D shades, fortunately or unfortunately, Vita is the only one that makes 3D shades. So the, the point is, Plus. technology is not just about our scanners. It's about the the shade, it's about the materials. There's there's a lot, and, and it, there will be more variables that come into play too. So let's switch gears here a little bit, guys. Um, Let's talk about the world of, of CBCP, uh, cone beams. And it's, it really comes down to perspective. So, so let's, uh, let's, let's talk about perspective. Here's Prince, uh, Prince William. Now, I wish we had a picture of Prince Harry because the Queen, if the Queen saw this from Prince William, she, she would not be too impressed, would she? Uh, but, but again, perspective, look at that picture. So now we see this picture. Not so bad. Queen Queen really isn't isn't so mad. And and William's saying, honestly, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Look at this picture. So really it comes down to perspective. And that's and that's the, the power of CBCT. It allows us to look at our patient's mouths from a three-dimensional perspective. And and the power in that is incredible. You know, we're able to see nerves, we're able to see anatomy. You look at this picture. Right, we look at the patient comes in. They have the pain on tooth number uh, seven. Yep, eight, seven, seven, seven. Tooth number one, two, seven. You know, Queen looks at this and she's not happy. I look at this and I go, I don't know what's going on with this tooth. I, you know, root canal looks good, post looks good. So now we take a CBCT. What do we see? Well, we see a fracture. And now the Queen's a little happier. I guess I'm a little happier because I I see what's happening with this tooth and I can come up with a, a reasonable treatment plan. But, but it all comes down to perspective, right? Now that we realize what's going on, we can treat it appropriately. So in this case here, you know, I've always been the surgery guy. I'm taking out tooth number 48 or tooth number 32. Very straightforward, and raise a flat, remove a little bit of bone, the tooth should pop out. But this tooth didn't give so easily. Why? Because of this. You know, sometimes in hindsight, and in Canada or Ontario, we can't just take cone beams for every single patient if we wanted to. We, we have to actually justify why. So it's not something that we're as liberal to do as, as, as our counterparts in the States. But in hindsight, if I had a cone beam, I would see this and would change everything in terms of how I took that tooth out. With uh, tooth number two, three, or tooth number 11 in the States, something like this where you have um, an impacted canine, it's with a cone beam, it's very easy to know exactly where to access that to be able to you know, create that window to put a chain on. Pull it so into, pull it into the, exactly, position, yeah. the space and uh, you can go ahead and finish the ortho. Yeah. So, so one of the questions is when, when do you invest? You know, remember we talked about that, when do you invest in a CBCT? And, and the, newest, uh, the newest CBCT from, from Dentsply Serona is called the Axios and, and it's $120,000 in, in American funds. That's an expensive thing. Remember our rule of return of investment, three to five years. 
once again, guys, this isn't cheap stuff. I mean, this these, these machines cost a lot of money. So the idea is we want to try to make sense of this again. So when we talk about our assumptions, you know, in Canada, you know, when we talk about the big areas, whether it's Toronto, Vancouver, these are our big, our big populous areas. The average dentist has 700 patients. That's it. You know, so that's your patient base. So we're going to be very conservative and we're going to use our numbers based on that. Now, we have a lot more patients than that. And, and there's a lot of dentists. And I would hope that most dentists in the States have more than that. But let's just use that as our assumption. So let's assume that you take a pan every five years. And you're charging $175 per pan in the States. Not bad. So in five years, 700 times 175 dollars per pen you just billed 122,000 you've paid off your cbct and keep in mind you've not taken one cbct all you've taken is pans now let's talk about our third world country here in canada right so in canada we charge 65 dollars per pan so over that five years what have we what have we charged we've charged 45 46 thousand dollars so that doesn't make sense my return of investment on that number doesn't make sense. So now I have to make up, I have to figure out if I want to buy that CBCT, where am I finding the uh, that extra $75,000? Okay, so remember $120,000. So our CBCT fee is 300 to $400 sorry, $300 to $400 per CBCT. Now that's in Canada. Now in Canada, and I and I think it's pretty much the same in the states, right? I I, we, the states we've talked to some of our years. friends in the states, right. and and it's about the same. Uh, in Canada, we have to pay for an interpretation fee. That means we have to send off that CBCT to our radiologist, and we have to pay anywhere between fifty and one hundred and fifty dollars. So that means our net profit or our net fee for that CBCT is two hundred and fifty dollars. I think in the States, you're actually profiting three to four hundred. Yeah, so. you don't have to pay for that. You can just take it and profit that money. But again, we want to be conservative to show everybody how this makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So with those numbers, let's let's look at those numbers. So if I'm only making $250 per CBCT and I have 700 patients in my practice, ridiculously small number of patients in my practice, that means I need to take 298, 300 CBCTs. CBCTs, I'll try that again. And over five years, what does that mean? It means I need to take five per month. That means one, essentially one per week. Can I do that? What are the indications for, for taking a, a cone beam? Okay, so guys, as we all know, cone beams, we think about cone beams with implants, right? That makes sense. But what else can we use a cone beam for? Let's think about this. Let's say we have a PA or a pan, and we see lesions. Just imagine we see the actual location, the origin, the, where it actually is exactly in that 3D space. We want to do if we want to do surgery, like I showed you, tooth yeah. number 48 or tooth number 32. Just imagine we see the curvature of those roots to be able to allow us to know exactly how to take that tooth out. Cracked teeth. How many times do we have patients that say they're in pain and we don't know whether or not the tooth is cracked or not? Imagine if we had a cone beam to be able to assess and diagnose whether or not a crack is present. TMJ, whether or not patients have, you know, joint issues, what can a cone beam help to determine whether or not there's any, um, any issues at all, any uh, pathology that's, 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 that's located there? Position of structures, endo, number of canals, the curvature of the canals. I mean, this is something that we would love to use every single day. Mm -hmm. Orthodontic therapy, airway, I mean, these are all things that are indications for cone beam, but, in the, but for the general dentist, most of us, do this every single day between those lines okay and do we see this once a week absolutely so bottom line is 100 percent, guys every single dentist should invest in one and it makes complete sense return on investment right so we've talked about perspective right so let's let's talk about perspective what does the queen think of the first picture she doesn't like it well you know what you look at those numbers and you go I, I still don't, it still doesn't make sense for me. Well, let's, let's, let's even think about this from a different perspective. What about if you actually accept referrals? You have a CBCT in your office and, and your, your colleague down the road doesn't have one. Why not say, you know what, you want information, you, wanna, you want this, send your patient to me. I'm going to take that CBCT. We're going to charge that patient. We're going to send that patient right back to you. I'm not poaching your patient. We're just helping each other out. 
it's actually really beneficial and it's it's the it's the right thing to do and and you're going to win let's put it all together guys let's talk about cad cam combi let's put all the numbers together so if we talk about you know we're gonna we're gonna talk about putting it all together but but let's let's go back for a second and talk about the traditional implant and crown workflow so what did we do when we're doing the the analog traditional implant crown workflow and i think jeff's talking about doing freehand implants and yep. doing crowns with with polyvinyl siloxane right so you know in in canada our fee for an for a uh, an implant and a crown around four thousand dollars some do it for less but but let's just say the average is four thousand dollars there and in the states uh we talk i think it's a little more it is we've talked to some of our colleagues and, it, and it's more so our implant costs six hundred dollars our lab fee eight hundred dollars our dentist fee two thousand six hundred now let's talk again we're talking traditional implant placement freehand 60 minutes surgical time do it bring them back for another appointment 20 minutes torque test and impression 20 minutes final impression 20 minutes, final crown insertion, 20 minutes. What's that add up to? We're looking at about two and a half hours of time, okay? And again, when we make sense of those numbers, our fee, you know, it was 26, 2,500, and two and a half hours, what does that put us at? That puts at us $1,000 per hour. Not bad, it really is not bad, based on our $400 per hour. So, you know, there's there's nothing to to be ashamed at with that number. So let's talk about the new workflow, the digital workflow, combining CAD, CAM, and COMBI. Let's talk about guided surgery, like we talked about creating a, a surgical guide to allow for, let's say, placement of a single implant. Okay. So we talked about costs, or the, or the, the, the fees are a little bit higher because now you need to make, make a surgical guide, now you need to take a comb beam. So now we kind of maneuver costs around, and you know our in-house lab fee is taking place of the lab fee that uh, we send out. But a lot of dentists say, you know what? I can't justify this. I can't charge this much to patients. And a lot of dentists, they charge less. Let's take $1,000 off, just again, to be more conservative. Mm -hmm. So $1,000 off, based on, let's say, our fees and in-house lab fee, let's just say it's just around $3,000. Okay, so remember that number, guys. Let's talk about time. The great thing is that once you do things digitally, the time savings that you have is significant. So instead of placing the implant over an hour, Literally, to place the implant takes like 10 minutes, but let's just say it takes half an hour. Okay, the patient comes back a number of weeks later, you do a post-op check, you do their initial scan, and then four months later, you do the torque test and you can basically deliver the crown. So you're now you're talking about just over an hour to do all of it, okay, the implant and the crown total. So when you talk about the lower fee that we're charging yep. and the total time, now you're talking about, again, tripling your efficiencies because now you have technology by your side. That is significant, going from 1000 to $3,000 per hour, significant. So let's take it a step further. For those of us who have technology, now you can do you know, a little bit more. You can do fully dentalist guided surgery. Patient comes in, she has dentistry, she wants implants. She wants you know, implant retained prosthetics. So we go ahead and, and design the placement of the implants based and, and create a surgical guide, place the guide over the patient. One hour later, the patient leaves with multiple implants. Okay, in her case, she left with 11 implants. We did this over an hour and a half. Let's talk about costs again, or fees. In Canada, the fees are about $2,000. Our implant cost, let's just say it's high. Let's say it's 500 bucks. So the dental fee per implant is $1,500. So remember that. Time. To do guided surgery, it reduces your time significantly. So let's just say that for one arch, it takes an hour. And let's just account for post-op checks, and let's just say you have to place healing collars down the road. So over time, it's 90 minutes, so an hour and a half. Let's talk about the fee. When you add those six implants up on the top arch, our dental fee is 9,000. Based on 90 minutes, we're actually now billing $6,000 per hour. So again, this is where we're taking a step above, okay? This is, this is why Mian's the surgical god, right? Okay, let's take it a step further, guys. Let, let's talk about a case uh this, these are cases that i do this is a case i did uh, a couple years ago um you look at this case and and it doesn't look so bad this this guy i've known for a long time he came in to see me and, and he wanted a full mouth rehab uh, loss of vertical dimension and uh you know so we did a, a 3d uh wax up we we showed him what we could do 
uh, showed him upper, lower, and he said, yeah, fantastic, let's let's move forward. So I did a, a vacuum form suck down to show him the increased uh, vertical dimension, what we were going to do. Now, what I did difference here was, so I made temporaries and he wore these for a couple months and it was completely additive so that he could get used to that increased vertical dimension. So this was very easy to do. Now, I coordinated with my with my lab. I didn't do this all in-house because I was a little overwhelmed as as we could say i didn't want to i didn't want to restore 28 crowns all on my own right there but i but i i coordinated with my my uh, lab guy down in san diego actually uh eddie corrales and uh you know we brought my patient in for two days and we prepped and we restored his mouth did 28 crowns in two days and restored him to this. And now this was a case that was actually published in uh, in cdocs.com and and you know it, it was a lot of fun and and it really wasn't stressful. We talk about stressful cases this was not a stressful case because I used my lab because I used the technology. This was I mean, the material I used here Vita was Suprinity. was Vita Suprinity. Yeah. Um and and, and I I love the the shade and and the the, the selection I had and it, it turned out beautifully. So we went from there to there in two days, uh, you know, fantastic. So making sense of the numbers, you know, my total fee for this patient was upwards, it was above actually 50,000, but just for, for discussion purposes, it was $50,000. I paid my lab guy to come up and do the lab work uh, in my office, paid for him for his flight, his hotel, rental car, $10,000. So what does that leave me? That left me $40,000. And, and what did that mean? So my temp time, my preparation time, I did the additive uh, to give him temporaries. It took me half an hour because it was all additive. My prep time was two and a half hours for the upper and lower. I mean, this guy is pretty fast. I mean, he's, he's been doing CACM for a long time. And so obviously he's probably more efficient than, than most. But it, but it did. It took me two and a half hours uh, for the prep time. For bond time, because I had Eddie there by my side, you know, bonding these teeth, they fit perfectly. The contacts were perfect. The occlusion was perfect. It took me an hour, no problem. So the total time that I was in this patient's mouth was four hours. Now remember, we go back to my fee. After paying my lab forty thousand dollars, that's ten thousand dollars per hour. I thought I always I always looked at me and I was like, man, I can't I can't compare to you in terms of what you do in terms of surgical. I, I this guy makes what he does surgically and, and the money he makes doing surgery is unbelievable. I think I think this case, Jeff, put me to shame. Well, Just, you know, it, it, it actually felt I felt pretty good that I could actually I could come close and, and actually compare to what Mian does. Just doing restorative, it, it was pretty cool. But it's amazing how you can actually still do pretty much single visit dentistry and still use a lab yeah. in order to be able to create these amazing results and the patient's happy and still be able to create these these profitable numbers with technology. Yeah, this was a fun case. It was not stressful. I used my lab to the fullest extent, and it was it was incredible, you know. And whether I choose to do lab or non-lab, you know, it, it was amazing. So one more thing. Let's talk about CAD CAM and ortho. And again, I told you I'd touch on this. So I'm not going to get into it in details. But so me and I, we were in Chicago a couple of years ago, and we ran into this guy in, in the Chicago Convention Center. And, uh, you know, we kind of went, do you think this guy needs ortho? Yeah, baby. Yeah. He, he, he really needs, does. He, he needs some ortho. <laughs> so, so when I do ortho, you know, I'm using my, my scanner and I'm using my 3D printer. And whatever 3D printer, they're all good out there. Again, this is not a promotion of any 3D printer. They're all, they're all very good. But I can 3D print all my models, multiple models in, in one case. And, and when I do this, you know, we, we talk about some serious numbers that were in terms of profit. Okay, so guess we're one last slide here. We can talk about this for an hour. Yeah. But I want to give you one slide, just to touch base on uh, digital uh, technology and orthodontics. So for those of you who knew Invisalign, you know how much Invisalign costs. And let's just say for a moment you were to switch from Invisalign to one of the competitors. And let's just say that you wanted to have a prime scan and you wanted to have a 3D printer to be able to, you know, be able to print your own models. Even if you did two, two, uh, two, two, cases. two cases a two month, cases. and let's just say that you were also conservative and you build $400 an hour versus 10 units a month and $1,000 an hour, it really doesn't matter. But basically, based on these numbers, you're increasing 
your bottom line. Let's say, for example, if you use like, you know, something called SureSmile, which is uh, what Jeff uses from Dense by Serona. These are the profit numbers, not, not what you're making, but what you're making in addition to what you're making from a business line. These are the numbers that you're profiting, even based on two cases a month at $400 an hour, you're increasing your bottom line by almost $50,000 to almost $300,000 a year. So what that means is that, let's say, for example, if you bought the Prime Scan, and if you bought the 3D printers and all that technology, you're paying all the technology off in as little as five months to a maximum of two years, and you haven't even cut a crown yet. So this, keep, that, keep that in mind, guys. You're doing ortho. You've bought a prime scan, you brought a prime mill, you brought, bought your, your speed fire, and you bought your 3D printer. I've, you've not cut one crown. All you've done is the ortho that you're already doing in your practice. And you paid off everything just doing that in five months to two years. Incredible. It's mind boggling. So at the end of the day, guys, where do we go from here? Like we said, follow your passion. You know, we talked about when you're excited about something, you do more of it. Find out what that is and do more of that, whatever whether, that is. Exactly. Whether it's ortho, whether it's restorative, whether it's it's single enters, whether it's full mouth rehabs, whether it's whether it's implants, whether it's airway, doesn't matter. Find what you're excited about. Find that niche and, and make yourself special and, and find, find a way to, to, to set yourself apart from everybody else. And, but all of that, the common denominator to all of that is digital dentistry. Now, June, June 24th. Yeah, June 24th, there it is. So Jim uh, already talked about this. Yeah, June 24th at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern, not standard time, I think daylight savings time. I think we have that wrong. Uh, or Pacific daylight savings yeah. time? I think that's right. It, it's PDT, uh, yeah, daylight savings time. I think time, we have so. that right yeah. wrong there, Jim. Thanks. Uh, yeah. We will be speaking and, and the- this, we'll this, be, is, this is part two, guys. Part two of, of, uh, of this, what we've already talked about, is maximizing aesthetics, efficiency, and profitability using advanced materials and digital technology so uh thank you so much for joining us today everybody who who tuned in thank you jim uh for setting this up thank you vita for doing this and uh we really appreciate it uh and then guys also too with regards to our second talk what we're going to be showing is we're actually going to be showing more numbers but we're going to show uh, cases cases using materials technology showing numbers showing actually how to actually have the workflow with your staff and actually using your staff to your yeah. greatest advantage. Some staining and glazing, how, how to make things so detailed, so so perfect, so that the, the chance of remakes is just negligible. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Uh, let's let's open the floor to, to Jim and to any questions anybody has. And uh, again, thanks for joining us on, on your uh, Thursday night, guys. Yeah, please reach out, guys. Our, our emails are there. If you have any questions, reach out to us, uh, to our personal emails, and we're more than happy to help. And we've got a ton of, a ton of questions. So before I, before I go into that, though, I'm going to um, just uh, capture a few more things here. And yeah, cheers. Mm -hmm. um, we are, so I'm going to show my screen real quickly and transition here. All right. So uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us uh, today. And like um, the doctor said, we've got another one coming up. Um, next month so uh, those of you who are looking for CE I want to remind you that you will get something from our Vita education uh, marketing and you'll have to answer a couple questions and then we can get you that CE information you can always uh, join us and revisit as they are as uh, Dr. Quack and Sumner are doing revisiting their wine you can revisit their webinar today uh, that they have and look at it um, uh, at your leisure, so along with some other videos and webinars that we have uh, on that website. You can visit us at the YouTube, Vita North America, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, all those, we have them posted uh, at all of those. If you need to, you can also uh, provide, give us a call here, a shout out here at the uh, corporate office here in California. Uh, just give us a call and we'll help you, even guide you back to um, Drs. Quack and Dr. Sumner as well, if need be. 
This is a list of uh, showing all of the uh, the Vita reps in case you need to get a hold of your local Vita rep and talk to them about materials that um, the doctors discussed uh, earlier during their program. Uh, please, um, you know, give us a call, give us a shout out for that. And as they mentioned, June 24th, uh, we're going to have another uh, part two in a sense. And I think you guys are going to deal with a little bit more about the material side of it. It was an excellent program just to talk about the, uh, um, you know, the capital, the ROI. And uh, I think that's significant that everyone understands that once you get into this, these are tools that can be used for uh, your dental practice. Or if it's a laboratory, I understand that there's more laboratories also getting a scanner and doing uh, digital dentures as well. So... Uh, we are going to uh, now then go into a Q&A. So let me start with the questions and uh, we will talk about the answers. So we have several questions. One is going to be, uh, let's see, uh, a comment I was using the Vita Sprinting for quite some time already, which is good. Um, and then Issues on uh, difference between an LT and an HD. Um, these are a, a question, I guess, about Suprinity. It's a add-on, but um, what do you find? H, uh, the HT, the LT, as far as placement for res restorations, is, is it dependent on the case? So I, I find that with Suprinity, I find there's HT and there's T. There's the T is I say it's more let's say opaque. So let's say if a patient has an existing crown adjacent to it that you want to match or something is a lot more opaque then I probably use a T shade but for the most part I'll say um, I'll use HT unless there's like a darker amalgam behind it. All right and then uh, from a different uh, perspective but and I think we're going to probably cover it you'll cover it on the next part too but you know how to make it um, the block more three-dimensional. And I think that's right. something that you'll probably talk about next uh, next program. I, which do, is I good. do a lot of that, uh, you know, even at uh, you know Dense by Serona World uh, a couple of years ago, Jim. You remember we did uh, we did talks on that, and we had seminars at at your booth where we actually showed uh, how to how to show customization for these different blocks, and and really. It you know it it looks overwhelming, but it's not. When you learn the basics, you can you can create translucencies, you can create craze lines, you can create uh, the transitions of the uh, of the different materials. Now now Vita also has the amazing materials in, in it that they've designed where they have the the materials that have the the transition of of the shade throughout the material, which is amazing too. So I mean we're going to get into that a little bit more. But uh, you know, even with a monochromatic material, there there are ways to do it, and and that's what uh, we show a lot of too. And I think that if you also allow your staff to be a part of it and be a part of that, uh, let's say, adventure for the patient, that your staff will feel that like, wow, they actually were were, were a, a participant of creating that final restoration for the patient. So if your staff actually has the ability to do that, and you kind of take it off your plate. It's amazing what your staff will be able to do for you in the practice and, and how they'll feel afterwards. So, right. I mean, I, I definitely encourage that for sure. Yep. All right. By the way, uh, guys, the um, Vita's just released a bleach Trilux Forte and a 1M1, so uh, a little bit more cosmetics. Love it. Yeah. Uh, so, Dr. Quack, you were mentioning about your staff and so forth. So, one of the questions is, did you feel that your front or um, back office staff, did they need to be retrained when you introduce the uh, your digital platform business model? You know what? For me, 100%. Yeah. I mean, this is something very, very different for me because the workflow changed completely from going from polyvinyl siloxane to now CAD CAM and doing everything in of single business dentistry. Um, they knew they had to know how to maneuver the operatories from the front end, how to book patients in terms of how much time was needed. But from the back end, you know, it is a learning curve. And I think that the staff need to be um, empowered to be able to um, to want to be able to like stain and glaze and, and, and take that upon themselves. And it's amazing how much your staff feels um, how how much they they you know in terms of they they put into uh, the the patient's final restoration when the patient's like wow that was great and you say well hey that wasn't me that was that was that was the team right and and when you see your assistants like they're like wow like I did that because at the end of the day the margins margin design that's all me in terms of the fit but in terms of the aesthetics 
that has nothing to do with me. The shade selection, the final, uh, the final staining and glazing, that's all my team. And so, you know, it's amazing how when you empower them and, and when they actually take take that into to, to heart and take that into practice, it's incredible what they will do. And they actually love it. They actually are, they, they want to do more of it. And you need, you need to uh, embrace them being a part of it for sure. You know, if, if we've all taken courses and we, we go away for a weekend and we come back as dentists and go, this is what we're going to do. This is, this is it. This is, this is the next evolution of my practice. But if they're not on board, it's not going to happen. You need to make sure that they are on board and they are, they take ownership and they're a part of it. As me and said, it has they have to be a part of it, not only in scheduling, uh, in, in 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 booking, but also in staining and glazing. Yeah, and when they do, they love it. I think you have to get them excited. And I think yep. that you know, if you if you make it sound like there's so much more work, yeah, they're not going to want to do. But I think that if you make it make them feel that they've actually made a difference in a patient's life. Wow, like it's amazing what they can achieve, and when they see the results and the patient smiles and they know that it was all them. That's right. It's, it, that, that makes all the difference in the world, and they'll continue to 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 do it for themselves and for the patients of the community. And we love to we love to give the credit. You know, when it, when a patient says to me, "Oh, Jeff, that that's amazing. I love this." I go, "You know what? Thank thank uh, thank Courtney. Thank thank Ashley here for the, the, that amazing restoration. They they chose the color. They did the staining and glazing. They they were part of it. They they you know." they're pretty proud they 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 puff up their chest they're they're like yeah that was me they're pretty proud of that and that's it's an amazing thing to be able to to hand off to our patient to our staff and i definitely recommend that anyone who's endeavoring into jumping into the digital world you need to be able to have your team back you up and be a part of it because you can't do this by yourself no you can't like you really can't all right. Uh, yeah, I think it's important that, you know, everyone's got to feel like they're part of it. They're part of the team. They're part of the result. They're part of helping uh, the patients, um, you know, have a, create a better smile and so forth. So that, that's good. I like your philosophy. Uh, question is, do you work with digital dentures at all? Have you started getting into digital dentures? Um, okay, so great question. So personally for me, I do a ton of implants. And with implant technology, I, everything's with CAD CAM and Cone Beam, and I work with uh, denturists who basically are leading denturists in Canada in the digital world. And yes, they they do everything digitally. Mm -hmm. They they I, I send my scans to them. They basically take it, they put it into their 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 the units, they, the software, and then they go and CAD and and three D print digital dentures. Personally, do I know a lot about the digital denture flow? I do not. But I know that everything we do is in the digital workflow with the denturist. Yeah, and and you know I would say the same. I mean, Mian has done a lot of this. We have a great denturist that we both work with, and and he is just cutting edge in terms of that. So, um, yeah, it's it it gives us amazing results. All right. So it's something you may in the future transition to once it it, it gets there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it would be exciting to be able to 3D print in our own office uh, dentures and, and do that. You know, I know we're basically at that, that stage where we can scan and the accuracy of the scan using the prime scan is incredible that we can actually make 3D dentures or digital dentures in the office. But I haven't got to that level of comfort yet. All right, and then uh, what was the biggest obstacle to move to a digital office business model? So if you had words of wisdom to tell everyone what what you know what is it they should be cautious about or work through or you know understand so they can I mean the make scary it thing we talked about is is basically cost scares a lot of people but once you get over that hurdle of cost which I think we've shown in 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 all aspects is is just is, is a non issue anymore is there's really there shouldn't be much of a hurdle it's it's more like you've already alluded to, Jim, is getting your staff on board. If you can get your staff on board and get them to embrace what you're doing, that's probably your biggest obstacle. We've all, as I said, we've all taken these courses and they and and your staff come back and go, yeah, right, Jeff, you're never going to do this. But if they're on board and they see the increase in in value, the increase in in uh, quality of product that you're giving to your patients, they're on board. So. Your, your patients already know they're on board. They've they've done their research. They're coming to you for that. 
So I, I think the biggest obstacle is getting your staff on board is what I would say. I think for me, the biggest obstacle is having that mentorship to actually know how to yeah. overcome the hurdles. I think for me, you know, because I'm a newer user, the first year or two were, were, were tougher. And, and I think that if I had literally someone by my side or I had the right courses where I could actually do things you know, live in patients in real time to actually see, to see the workflow, to see all the hurdles, to understand all the, all the intricacies of, of what you need to do. If I had someone by my side to be able to help me through that, I think that would actually help. And, and so with Jeff and I, you know, on our bottom, on, on, on our screen, on, on, on our slides, you have this logo of Dentistry Academy. We created an academy to do just that. We created something in Canada to allow us to be able to have dentists come in so that when we actually train them in CEREC dentistry or same-day dentistry, you can actually learn on live patients. So you actually understand the digital workflow. When you do this in, in with the CEREC docs, when you go down, you know, down to the States, you do, this on, you do it on models. And it's very, very different. And I think that you need to have that, that uh, an experience to that relate to. That live experience, yeah. And so, you know, we created that program just for, you know, dentists to be able to understand how to actually understand the workflow. You create the experience for the dentist, you create the experience for their staff. So the staff actually goes ahead and stains and glazes. So that whole workflow, that comprehensive workflow is actually, you know, is, is started and finished from A to Z or A to Z. And um, yeah, it, it actually works out beautifully. Well, you know, that was, as, as I kind of alluded to, the biggest issue was, was having staff on board. Well, we've, we've resolved that problem with our dentistry academy. We said, we've set up a, a teaching academy where you bring your staff with you to learn with you. And you're not only working just on models. I mean, it's not models. You're working on live patients. You bring your patients or whether we supply the patients or you bring your own patients, which is more ideal. Um, and, and that way they walk out of there after the weekend of, of training, they're going back to their own practices and they're very comfortable doing uh, digital dentistry. This has been this has been a game changer, and this is what we've learned over the years of, of you know what do we what did we take away from from our learning experience, and what would have sped up the process? You know, we talk about uh, you know buying technology efficiency and profitability. We're taking those three things and shortening the span between those three three things, so that in order for you to get to that profitability stage, it's much it's a much shorter span. And, and if anyone's interested in attending your academy, they just uh, contact you or... Um, right. Look at our, our academy website, online. Uh, yeah, yeah, the website. dtacademy.ca. Again, this is not, we're not trying to promote our, uh, you know, no, but, ourselves. No, but you, I'm sure some, some of them are uh, curious to see, you know, how they could attend maybe a live, uh, you know, training. So, uh, Thanks, all right. So... Uh, the uh, appointment time for a single unit. What's your average time? How how quick can you move through a, a patient? I yeah, mean, in uh, reality, you know. Again, and I'm not, and again, I'm not trying to show off here. You know, like I said, my favorite cases is when a patient comes in and they've broken a cusp. Uh, you know, they've broken a, a buccal cusp or a lingual cusp on a premolar or something, and they have a big MOD amalgam in there. They can be on the side of the day. It doesn't matter. Every single day, they're going to come in, and I'm going to get that patient in and out of the chair in 45 minutes. You know, if it's a if it's a, a full crown where I have to maybe re, you know I'm I'm doing the prep and then I have to assess the amalgam. It, it, almost 90 99 percent of the time, I'm going to re, redo that amalgam, rebuild the core. I'm not going to depend on on technology that was placed 30 years ago. So I'm going to rebuild the core. You know, in and out hour and 15 minutes. And again, this is me. So this is not me trying to show off. This is just, I've been doing this 12 years, me and, you know, you're probably, you know, me and Mr. Efficiency. So, so he's probably same. So, so my, so my office is a little bit different. I don't have as many operatories as Jeff does. And so my office, I have, let's say, for example, let's say, let's say if I'm doing a single visit dentistry and I have one operatory. So a lot of dentists, they may only have one operatory to work up. So how do we do that? So they'll come in, let's just say that uh, you book a crown appointment, Let's say it's 40 minutes. The 40 minute prep, basically, you can design, patient leaves. We tell them to come back in an hour. One, you know, one hour later, they come back in for a 10 minute insert. So, literally, in 50 minutes total time, you have the crown. Right? So, and a lot of times, you know, you're, there are patients in and out in half an hour. So, in the, in the first appointment. So, it really depends on, on how you want to, you know, maneuver things around. I think the biggest thing for one of the big things for me was how do I create single visit dentistry when I only have very few operatories. Right. Because the patient can't sit there for an hour to wait or they, they you can't just right. you know hand 
in the room. So, so there's there's different workflows, and this is interesting because where me and and I are very different, and and what's really kind of moved the needle is the prime mill. You know, before with uh, zirconia restorations, it used to be they used to take a, a long time. Now with the speed fire, with the the prime mill, in terms of how fast it can actually mill. A zirconia restoration. We're talking, as Mian said, you two, know, two and a half, two and a half to four minutes. At the most. You know, three, three or four minutes to mill a zirconia. Then it goes into speed fire, and it's done. I mean, this is these these are things that have have moved the needle for for single visit dentistry. I mean, the the average dentist dentist should be able to do a zirconia restoration within an hour and fifteen minutes to an hour and a half. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Even if you're even if you're taking your time and yep. you're not as efficient, an hour and a half, 100%, they're in and out. Yep. All right. So that kind of leads into another question. Um, so your initial proposals. Uh, question is, do you leave it at that? How often do you tweak the design before you mill? Every time. Yeah, I always tweak it 100%. 100%. Every time I tweak it because you know what, proposals are great, but every single time I want, I know what I want, and you know, there are some speakers out there who say, you know, green means go, go, you know, no, every time I know what I want in terms of emergence profile, I want parallelism, I want a certain broadness of the contact. So every single time, 100% of the time, I'm tweaking it. But it takes about about a minute or two. At the it really most. does. It doesn't yeah. take much at all. And and there's, yeah. there's what we teach in terms of there's, there's uh, mnemonics that you go through in terms of, you know, FOCC. Fisher occlusion, contour, contact, how you go through this and how you adjust them very, very quickly, and then you get perfection every single time. But the proposals are phenomenal. Like yeah, they're, they're really, really are. very, very close, and so there's not much to change once you have that initial proposal. Yeah, a minute, two minutes, or that's nothing. So exactly. it is nothing at all. Yeah, exactly. So you were mentioning about the ROI of uh, three to five years. Uh, what's your most profitable procedure? Well, I mean, we would differ in opinions here for sure. I mean, Mian, you know, he yeah, loves my, 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 my still surgery. surgery. Mian, Mian's the surgery god, you know. I mean, because there's does, no because of surgery, there's no overhead. There's no overhead. He does no overhead. So, yeah. I mean, you know, Dense Glycerona and, and Vita and, and companies, they don't, they don't care about Mian, you know, unless he's buying his <laughs> uh, his his surgical instruments. But oh, know, you, me, yeah, you, you have to replace those scalpels every once in a while, right? Yeah, well, yeah, you know. <laughs> so the blades are blades aren't too expensive, Jim. So you know, um, but for me. I would say, you know, crown and bridge and, and restoring implants, you know, really, I mean, it's just, it's, that is the most profitable uh, revenue for me, for sure. All right. I think that, in, I think that even in the CAD CAM world, for those who, let's say, have adopted in a way that I did, and I, did I ever think that I would ever do the numbers that I did? It? Absolutely not. But when you talk about that, uh, that secret where we say that, you know, when you enjoy what you do, you do more of it. All of a sudden, that really came into play, and all of a sudden, I was like, "Wow! Like I'm actually doing the numbers, not because I was pushing it, but because I believed in it, and because yeah. I was more passionate about it." And literally, I paid off my entire system in a year. So you it's know, not three to five years; it's one year, and then af after that, everything is just gravy. So it's, yeah. you know, if I can do it, anybody in the industry can do it. Like we're nothing special; we're just we've yeah. just been doing it, a diff you know, a lot longer. But anybody, every dentist can do what we do. There's no question. And you empower your patients too. I mean, really, we are we are the softest cell dentists you'll ever meet. You know, we just say, you know what, you're smart people. Here's here's what you can do. Here's here's your options. I can do a big pin retained composite resin here. Uh, I can do three pins and build this up. We're not going to get a good, good contact. Or I can do this. And you know, you make the decision that's right for you. And invariably, every time they make the right decision and they they're doing a CERC or a CAD CAM restoration and it's you know I mean it's really you know you give them the power and and they do the right do the right thing it's it's so easy I think bottom line it's win-win all around yeah that's really is. that's really what we have to look at and as dentists as practitioners we have to look at you know it's not just about us being profitable it's about doing the right thing the best thing for everybody patients patients smell it if you're if you're desperate if you're you one of these you know, if you're a young dentist and you're out there and you're just trying to trying to get numbers, you're trying to pump the numbers because you need to pay off that that practice that you paid crazy numbers for, which unfortunately is out there. You know, they smell it. You don't, you can't be that way. You have to go back to that that common denominator that that we talked about at the very beginning. Yeah, ethical, ethical dentistry, dentistry exactly. That is that is everything. All right, just just a couple more questions. Um, so between anterior and posteriors, um, 
is there a split there, a percent that you do, or is it do you tend to find one easier than the other? Is it all the same? Is it case by case? We, we we fix them we fix them all yeah we, <laughs> you know i mean it, it it it's evolved i would say uh you know i mean there there i it's hard to even break it down i mean now i do honestly since covid i have had so many full mouth rehabs and anterior rehabs because patients come in and they they're not spending money anywhere else they come in and they go i want my my teeth done i want my teeth redone and you know i say well you need you need, uh, you know, three crowns, three veneers, whatever. And they're like, yep, let's do it. it. It's just, it's it's crazy. It's been a crazy time. And we talked about the COVID effect. It has been dramatic. But I think with, uh, let's say with steric dentistry, I think a lot of dentists, because, you know, they're, they, they want to shy away from the aesthetics. They just stick with posteriors. Right, right. But I think that if you use the right materials and understand how to stain and glaze, I really believe, and I've seen it in my practice, where you know my my assistants they don't shy away from picking the right shade or staining and glazing. And again, my predominant of what I use is Vita because it is I just only use 3D Master the shade, and the only blocks that make sense are the you know the Vita you know Vita blocks. And so it's it's bang on every single time, and the girls they, I mean they love it, and it's amazing. Even the anterior in the anterior area, I mean yeah. they don't shy away and. The, the patients are like wowed when, when they actually have their one restoration of the front. And again, not to toot my own horn, but I mean, I challenge I challenge anybody. I mean, I say, you know, you, you say you can only do uh, CEREC uh, efficiently and, and acceptably in the posterior. I go, I will do a single anterior any day and I'll challenge myself, I'll challenge them and I'll say, I'll show my work to anybody and compare it to anybody. That's fine, you know, because, and I'm nothing special. I just have a little more experience than, than some of the other beginners, but, but I can get you there uh, in a whole, a whole lot faster and shorter time than uh, just showing the, the, the tricks that I have or the tools that I have. All right, and then a um, couple more. The um, question is, it's always comes up is, what cases don't you do? You know, what, what do you actually feel that it's- correct. Has to go to um, a lavatory, for instance. I know you showed the case um, earlier. Right. Yeah, there are special think, cases yeah. that you just say, "Hey, it's best to have the lab fabricate." I, or I think for myself, based on let's say single visit dentistry, if it's a case where it's let's say uh, at least a four unit bridge or or a larger span, then obviously I'll have the lab come into play. But in general, if it's single units, even if it's multiple single units or a three unit segment, um, no, every, like everything's done in house. Yeah. I we, mean, I, I really hate to send anything out to the lab. The only thing I send out to the lab is a large span bridge, which in, in the dental world, really, we don't do a lot of anymore. But if, I, if I'm forced into that situation where I'm doing a, a large span bridge where the, it will actually not fit into a block, that's when I send out sent out to a lab. There have been cases where I'll do six anteriors and I did a six anterior case with uh, zirconia and I was able to mill it, but it would not fit into my speed fire. So I sent it out mm. to the lab and they centered it and customized it uh, with stain and glaze and, and you know, it cost me 250 bucks or something for them to center and stain and glaze, but I did it, I milled it myself. So as Mian said, that's the only ones that I would send out to a lab is where it's uh, it's a long span bridge that I can't do in house. But it's not to say that we don't use labs. It's not no, to say no, that no. I mean I still use yeah. a lab all the time for a lot of other components, a lot of other implant um, abutments and stuff like that. So I mean, yeah. I mean, so we we make sure that we our relationship with our labs are important and key yeah. for hundred percent. And that case that I did with uh, where I did twenty eight. I mean, I didn't I didn't want the stress of of designing, milling, customizing twenty eight crowns in two days. I brought up I brought the best lab guy I knew. And he did it all. And and so it's not just, you don't want to just use any lab. You want to use a lab that understands the materials and your expectations, both uh, cosmetically and restoratively, uh, strength-wise. And they understand the digital realm. They understand the digital workflow. So that's important, not just any lab. It needs to be a, a lab that understands the digital workflow. 100%. All right. So the last question, the most important, uh, what wine are you drinking? Obviously, it must be either from California or Canada, right? It is. Always, it's always, it's California. always California. It's always right California. Now, 
this is a uh, is a is a cab sav from we are we're big cab sav guys so we're waiting for vita to invite us down there to <laughs> to do a, a wine tour uh, down uh, down in uh, down yeah. in, in your area yeah 100 all our wines that we drink 100 percent of the time is always california cab sav 100 percent yeah all right that's good to hear so um any any last words you want to part with the uh the audience before we go i think we just want to say you know we, we really appreciate you joining us i know a lot of you uh you know may already have some level of of experience in terms of the digital world and i think what's what's overwhelming is how do i now integrate all the digital digital aspects into my practice and, and we want to try to simplify that and, and make sure that 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 works for you and our next talk will be how to how to take this to the next level and then we want to bring uh, continue on with that in terms of you know bring bring the the orthodontic uh, aspects into it bring the the implant aspect, bring your your surgical guides all into the realm, and that's what we you know that's what we've done in terms of our our academy. This is what we try to teach. We want to teach. It all started with us, uh, you know, teaching our colleagues, our friends, our, our multiple practices that we we actually have together. Um, how do how do we do this? So we just want to share the knowledge. This is not about uh, you know us trying to be something bigger than we are we just we love what we do and we want to pass it on we've, we're at that stage of our career where we've done it long enough and we want to we want to share share the the knowledge and and the i guess i don't know the experience yeah. the I, I think guys that you know just it is overwhelming a lot of dentists are like myself and you know you see these big price tags of equipment you know fifty thousand a hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollars and you wonder whether or not you're gonna buy it and all of a sudden it's gonna sit on the shelf, right? It's it's scary. And so we wanna be able to kind of have you understand how to make sense of that ROI, the return on investment on when you buy something, how to make sense of, you know, yeah. do you buy it, do you not buy it? How do you actually integrate in your practice? How are you gonna pay for it? And we wanna make sure that, you know, you have the same experience that we have and that you don't have, you know, that, that you don't, or you're, you're sorry, that you're not led down the wrong path. Right. And by all means, reach out to us on our, on our emails. You know, we're more than happy to help, you know, all our colleagues out to, to move forward because, you know, we do believe in uh, that next step in that digital world. And I think if you don't have the various aspects of uh, technology, you're going to be behind. And we want to make sure that everybody has that equal opportunity and to succeed like, like we have. And this is an opportunity not only for, for us to win as dentists, but patients to win too. And that, and, and as we yeah. said, ethical dentistry. And that's where it comes down to. If we're providing better dentistry, higher quality dentistry, uh, less visit coming to the dentist, especially during COVID times, during all these times, we all win. And and that's really that's what it comes down to, ethical dentistry. And that's that's been you know what we've we've based our our practice and our and our teaching on. And so hopefully everyone, if you've enjoyed what you've heard today and you want to learn more, you know, stay tuned for our part two, our part two in, in, I think, end of June. And Jim will kind of uh, send the emails out. But yeah, we're going to get into a lot more cases and aesthetics and actually the workflows. And it'll make a lot more sense to, to everybody. All right, guys. You know, thanks for thoroughly exploring the uh, ROI, the, you know, the material slightly and the um, equipment and how it really makes sense. And, you know, just to hang in there, keep keep going if you do purchase this equipment um, and progress. Uh, that's what it's all about, especially to uh, make your patients, uh, you know, brighter and happier and so forth. So I want to thank uh, both of you for um, helping us out tonight, this afternoon. And I want to let everyone know that, again, if you're looking for CE, you'll get an email. Go ahead and reply to that. Uh, we also have the, the links up on our website, uh, vitanorthamerica.com. Uh, uh, and please join us again for the second part of Dr. Quack and Dr. Sumner's uh, presentation, June 24th. And, yes, we will send out a, an email uh, for um, uh, to you again. Uh, to allow uh, you to register and be part of that as well. So I want to thank everyone. Thank you, uh, the audience, everyone, for joining us today. And this will conclude uh, another Vita Learning Webinar with Dr. Quack and Dr. Sumner. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.